Hey friends, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today we're going to play with a budget friendly wig together. This is a wig by Kobe. I don't have the package with me. Look down in the description for all of the details about this wig. It's an Amazon wig that was sent to me by Haircube. Apparently Haircube has multiple brands and I've reviewed this piece and I want to show you how I can work with it to make it look a little more realistic. It's actually really great for a budget friendly wig, but my biggest struggle are these bangs are just way too long and this needs just some, maybe some lift, something done with the part line. So we're gonna play and we're gonna see what we can do. If you wanna watch, then stick around. I decided to take the wig off while I tell you what I'm about to do because the bangs just poke me in the eye and it's just a pain. Often bangs are too long when I almost in every wig I've ever had that had bangs the bangs were too long for me. My measurement is about two and a half inches from my hairline to where I would want bangs to fall on me and that might be part of it. Part of it is these wig manufacturers are trying to make pieces that work for a really wide variety of people. And so therefore it's better that they leave them too long than too short. So what I like to do when I'm just trimming bangs that are already started for me is I like to use a thinning razor. It's very, very important that you make sure your blade is sharp because these dull very, very quickly, especially on synthetic. Now this one I will link in the description below and it does come with some spares, but you can also buy a package of blades and then all you have to do it to switch the blade out. It's really simple. And if you are good at cutting, you can just use scissors. You can point cut. You can do a lot of things. I'm not great with scissors. I prefer the razor. It's just a little bit more user friendly and foolproof. It may take a little longer, but it, to me, it's worth uh, eliminating the risk of cutting too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start trimming up these bangs with the razor. And I'll speed it up just a little bit for that section, but come watch. All right, friends, we're going to speed this up a little bit. I think even with the sped up version, you can see what I'm doing instead of taking a long time to show you real time. This is a work in progress. Don't panic um, when you're facing cutting a wig for the first time. I really think this thinning razor is going to take away a lot of your fear. Once you get started, you'll see that it's not harsh. It's really easy to go slow. You're not going to make a huge cut and a mistake like you might with a regular scissors. And sometimes you might want to do this in multiple sessions. Cut some the first time, wear it for a while, see how it is, see if you need to cut some more. There's so many things you can do with this thinning razor. You can even cut some face framing layers if you need them. Just remember, all of this is a work in progress, and these cheap wigs are great ones to practice with. All right, so these are better. They're not perfect, but I don't want to trim them too much yet because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hot airbrush to this and just see if I can maybe mess this up a little bit and make this look a little bit more realistic because I don't want... I just think it's a little bit too perfect up here. And because this has that fake part which a lot of these budget-friendly Amazon wigs come with. They come with this fake plastic part that you can, most people aren't looking at your hair that closely, but if it's too perfect like this, that can kind of give away that it's a wig. So if we can get some lift here, if I can maybe get this a little messy, if I can get some more lift in the bangs, that might disguise that perfect part. So let's take a hot air brush and see what we can do. And wait, before I stop, if once I'm done with that, these bangs are still a little too long, then I'll trim them up some more. But I have a feeling they're going to shrink up when I take the heat to it. So I want to be cautious not to over trim. All right. So when you're going to take heat to a wig, even heat friendly wigs, I like to spray a little water. I think it's going to help um, the wig respond better to the heat. I don't like to get it soaking wet. So I do like to use these mister bottles. I think they work great for this purpose. I will link this one in the description if you just need an example. And so now what I want to do is I just want to get some lift up here to try to disguise that 
sort of funny shape that the top is causing because of that plastic. So any hot airbrush will work. I actually have the Beach Waver Blow Brush. The reason I have this one is because it comes with four attachments and I love um, multi-purpose tools. So I don't think I put that in there right. There we go. So that's what I'm gonna use. Let's see. Do it in a lot of different directions to help with that lift that I'm trying to achieve. I think I should have put a wig grip on. on a mannequin head, that can actually be really easy. An easier way to sort of navigate with the wig. I think cutting bangs is better to do on your own head. You can see it's starting to change just a little bit of shape. that's important to remember with um, synthetics is that what sets the new style you're trying to achieve is the cooling process. So I'm just going to hold it over this direction. Let me get these out of my eyes for just a minute here to let it cool a little bit so that that lift will stay. I do have a feeling I'm gonna have to trim these bangs a little bit more, but that's essentially the plan. Just play with it, take heat to it. You know, I'm just trying to mess this up a little bit and get a little bit of lift here. I can't change the part at all, but I can try to get a little lift so that this is not as noticeable. I'll keep working. All right, just a little bit more here of me using the hot airbrush. I'm trying to impress upon you that this can take time. In a perfect world, I would have been holding some of this a little bit longer than I did for the sake of this video, but really you just play with your wigs, use the heat, and you'll figure out what works best to achieve the look that you're seeking. I think these hot air brushes are a little bit more gentle than some of the flat irons that are out there, so just do your best. Well, look at this, you guys. It's getting much, much better. Sometimes it can take uh, quite a bit of heat to really make a meaningful change. Now, the final thing that I'm gonna do about these bangs, they are better, and it really helped to sort of push them back so that when they fell down, they would have a little more lift. Because this is a pretty big round brush, it's hard to really round brush the bangs really well. And so the last thing that I do, once I get the bangs mainly where I want them, is I do a little point cutting with a regular scissors. Now, I don't want to do this here because I can't see well in my phone, and I don't have a good setup to show you, but I'll just do a little demonstration. Basically, when there are just a couple of pieces left that are too long, I've mainly shortened everything, I'll go in with my scissors and I'll point cut into the little parts that are just a little bit too long, just like that. The reason why I don't use the scissors in the beginning is because it's too easy to take a big chunk off and I'm not skilled and I'm not steady, but to do just a few little pieces at the end, I do feel like I can do that. Over here, it's still a little bit too long. So instead of point cutting that, I'm gonna use the razor. Also, if I wanna shorten a few of these top sections to give it a little bit more of a wispy look at the bottom instead of more blunt, that's what this razor is great for because I can pick up like a top layer and I can just gently, 
It's almost like I'm thinning those bangs. Just like that. And I like to, the side ones, I like to cut that direction because that's kind of how I want them to lay. So that will help with that. Just like that. Guys, what do you think? I mean, if for a short video like this, I think it's great. I do think I'll keep working on it a little bit. I think that is so much better. And especially if you're not sitting or somebody's staring, although that isn't a bad part at all. I just think if you buy a $20, $30, $40 budget-friendly piece, having some tools that will help you work with it will really help make that wig something that you'll feel confident wearing and that you won't um, just worry that it's so wiggy. I don't think this looks wiggy. I really don't. Not in person. Um, obviously, the style isn't going to be for everybody. But, I mean, if you don't like how that is, just tuck one side. This is a really tuckable piece. You could stick a bobby pin in to hold it back. I mean, I even think you could take and put it in a half up, half down. Wigs with bangs are so great for that. I just, I'm, I really don't want you to be discouraged if you can't afford the higher end wigs. I think budget friendly wigs could work. They won't all work, but I think there are some good ones out there. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help. I hope you have a great day. Thank mm -hmm. you.